There is a verse that has such an intense spiritual force that it has transcended the limits of time and history. Considered one of the closest and most direct teachings of Jesus Christ, this revelation has impacted and changed the lives of millions of people around the world. However, this verse is not found in the Bible we know today. It remained hidden underground for more than a thousand years until, by God's design, the time was right for it to be revealed. The Bible we read today is made up of 66 books, rigorously selected and handed down over the centuries. However, other equally valuable texts were eventually excluded and, in order to preserve their content, were hidden from the hands of those who could destroy them. These books remained hidden for more than a millennium until, at an unexpected moment, God's plan brought them to light. It was in the desert of Egypt, a lonely and distant setting, that this miracle took place. A shepherd was quietly leading his sheep up a mountainside when suddenly one of them wandered away from the flock. Eager to find it, the shepherd left the rest of the group and began searching for the lost sheep. This search led him to a deep cave where, amidst the darkness and silence, he came across an extraordinary discovery. Some sealed amphorae holding ancient scrolls inside. These manuscripts became known as the Gnostic books a set of texts full of spiritual teachings and reflections that transcend common understanding. But among these documents was a real hidden gem, the lost gospel of St. Thomas. Unlike any other book, this gospel contained something profoundly unique. It didn't just tell stories, but offered access to the exact words of Jesus, without the filters or interpretations that follow. For this reason, it is considered the closest we can get to the authentic voice of Christ. But what makes this gospel so special? Imagine being able to hear the Savior's words directly, to absorb his teachings without intermediaries, without distortions, in a purity that touches the heart and soul. The gospel of St. Thomas, with its simplicity and depth, emerges as an essential guide to understanding the true meaning of Christ's teachings and applying them genuinely in our lives. Among the verses in this gospel, one stands out for its spiritual power. This verse carries a message that has been transformative for millions of believers around the world. It reveals a universal truth, a triad of principles that form the basis of Jesus' teachings and allow us to understand Christianity in its purest essence. In the first lines of this gospel, we are confronted with a direct warning from Jesus. Whoever finds the meaning of these words will not taste death. But what did Jesus mean by this phrase? What deep meaning does it conceal? At first, this statement sounds like a mystery. However, upon further reflection, we realize that Jesus is giving us a promise. To understand the meaning of these words is, in fact, to find the key to eternity. He uses the term death, but in this context, what is death really? For many, death is seen only as the end of physical existence. However, Jesus invites us to look beyond it. He suggests that there is something more, a life that extends beyond physical death. To understand his words would be to access that dimension, living so fully and meaningfully that we transcend earthly existence. Now, think about your own life. How many times have you felt stuck, as if something essential was missing? As if, despite all your efforts, a feeling of emptiness persists? Jesus tells us that a true understanding of his teachings is the way to break these chains, to break out of this stagnation and find a higher purpose. He invites us to discover a sense of life so intense and full of meaning that death itself loses its power. And in the second verse of this gospel, Jesus goes even deeper into this revelation. When he finds, he will be troubled, and when he is troubled, he will marvel and reign over the whole. These words make us realize that the search for spiritual truth is not without its challenges. Finding the true meaning of Christ often shakes us to our core. We can feel disturbed, disoriented, and even restless. But this disturbance is the beginning of a transformation. From this initial shock comes wonder, a feeling of profound understanding, peace, and clarity. And at that moment, it's as if we reign over all things, because we understand the greater purpose that governs our lives. 
Therefore, the Gospel of St. Thomas is not just an ancient text, but an invitation to dive deeper into the mysteries of Christ and to live a faith that transcends the ordinary, opening us up to the true essence of spiritual life. Imagine encountering a truth so profound that it challenges everything you believe to be true and at the same time, expands your vision of reality. Feeling disturbed at that moment is not a sign of weakness, but a harbinger that you are about to cross a threshold of transformation. This initial disturbance is actually an invitation to explore uncharted territory within yourself. But don't dwell on the confusion. As you accept and experience this sensation, you begin to notice that the turbulence dissipates, giving way to wonder. It's in this moment of wonder that the world reveals new colors and meanings, opening doors to a renewed gaze. How many times have you been surprised to discover something that has completely changed your perception of life or who you really are? That feeling of amazement is only the beginning of a deeper and more lasting transformation. Each discovery brings with it a power of renewal, which enlightens not only the mind, but also the spirit. Finally, the verse offers us an intriguing promise. By marveling, you will reign over the whole. What does this really mean? Reigning over the whole is not about exercising external dominion, but about reaching a level of understanding that makes you master of your own life. It's about gaining clarity in the midst of chaos and finding serenity where before there was uncertainty. Think about how many times you have emerged from a period of doubt stronger and more aware of your true inner power. This process of transformation is a continuous journey that leads us to live according to our highest purpose. Now we come to the third verse, perhaps the most revealing of all. Jesus said, If those who lead you say to you, Behold, the kingdom is in heaven, then the birds of the air will go before you. If they say, It is in the sea, then the fish will go before you. But in fact, the kingdom is within you and outside of you. Here, Jesus gives us an extraordinary explanation of the true meaning of the kingdom of heaven. He warns us not to be fooled by false directions and by those who claim to know the way. Instead of looking for divinity in external places such as the heavens or the depths of the sea, he invites us to look within and around us. The divine essence is both within us and permeates everything around us. It's a concept that challenges the idea that the kingdom of God is a distant place or a future promise. On the contrary, it is a present and living reality accessible to all who have eyes to see and ears to hear. At the beginning of the verse, Jesus calls us to be wary of those who try to guide our lives and shape our beliefs. Who are these voices? It could be the media, social norms, the opinions of friends and family, even if they come with good intentions. Ultimately, however, the real guide is our own inner voice. Are you ready to listen to it? This teaching invites us to reflect deeply on how we see God's presence. We often look for answers in distant places, believing that the divine is reserved for the future or for a space far from our understanding. But Jesus teaches us that this external search leads us down an endless path because the true answer has always been and will always be within us. If we hear that the kingdom is in heaven, the birds will have already gone before us. If we believe it's in the sea, the fish will already be in front of us. In other words, looking for the kingdom of God outside of ourselves is a mistake that prevents us from realizing that it is available here and now. In Luke 17, we find confirmation of this teaching. The kingdom of God is within you. This is not a future event or a distant promise. The kingdom of God is a living presence, a truth that permeates every breath, every moment. In Matthew 5, Jesus says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. This purity is not only moral, but also the ability to see the divine in every aspect of existence, starting with one's own being. So Jesus' invitation is clear. Stop looking far and wide for what already exists within you. Don't be fooled by those who say that the kingdom is far away or out of reach. It is present in your heart and around you waiting to be recognized and lived out in all its fullness. By accepting this teaching, you discover that the kingdom of God is more than a concept. 
It is a living experience, a profound communion that transforms the way you see the world and, above all, the way you see yourself. Purity of heart allows us to see God's presence and perceive His kingdom in every moment of our lives. Reflect for a moment. How many times have you sought answers from external sources such as books, spiritual leaders, or the opinions of others? How many times have you felt disoriented and directionless, looking in the wrong places for what always seemed out of reach? However, true wisdom is not to be found outside. It lies within you, waiting patiently to be discovered. All the answers you seek already exist within you, waiting for you to bring them to light. In verse 113 of the Gospel of Thomas, the disciples ask Jesus, When will the kingdom come? And Jesus answers them in an unexpected way. The kingdom will not come with visible signs. People will not say, Here it is, or there it is, for the kingdom of the Father is spread throughout the whole earth, and people do not see it. We often expect great manifestations or supernatural events to prove God's presence. However, Jesus reveals something profoundly simple and transformative. The Father's kingdom is already present among us, but we are incapable of perceiving it. This statement leads us to reflect on our ability to see the divine. If the kingdom is here and now, what prevents us from seeing it? In Matthew 13, Jesus says, Blessed are the eyes that see and the ears that hear. The sight and hearing he refers to are not merely physical, but spiritual. Seeing the kingdom of God requires an open heart and a mind attuned to divine wisdom. So why are so many still unable to see this kingdom spread across the earth? The answer lies in the spiritual blindness that prevents us from recognizing God's presence in our daily lives. Jesus invites us to see the kingdom in the ordinary, in the little things, in the simplicity of each day. In Matthew 6 verse 10, he teaches us to pray. Your kingdom come, you will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. This prayer is a powerful reminder that God's kingdom manifests on earth when our lives are in harmony with his will. But to achieve this harmony, we need to turn our gaze inwards, where wisdom and truth already dwell. How many times have you had an inner feeling, an inexplicable certainty, that showed you the right path? This is the kingdom that Jesus is talking about. By recognizing and trusting this wisdom, you begin to connect with an inexhaustible source of knowledge and power. Another strong verse in the Gospel of Thomas about the kingdom of heaven is number 109, where Jesus compares the kingdom to a man who unknowingly hid a treasure in his field. When he died, he left the field as an inheritance to his son, who also didn't know how much was hidden. The son, unaware of the treasure, sold the field. It was the new owner who, by plowing the land, found the wealth and began to use it to his advantage. This teaching invites us to reflect on the potential and wealth that is hidden within us, often wasted for lack of knowledge and understanding. Imagine what you could discover about yourself if you spent more time exploring your inner self. Just as the sun sold the field without knowing the treasure it contained, how often do we act in a similar way? underestimating our own value and giving away our opportunities without even exploring them. This represents the way we live our lives, often without realizing the riches we have inside. In Hosea 4 verse 6, we find a blunt warning. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The absence of self-knowledge leads us to waste our abilities and to live in a superficial and unsatisfactory way. These verses remind us that God's kingdom is as much within us as it is around us. This truth, if fully understood and experienced, has the power to completely transform our existence. But in order to access it, we need to be willing to get to know ourselves, to explore our depths and find the divine essence that dwells in each of us. As the Gospel of Thomas says, When you know yourselves, you will be known and you will realize that you are children of the living Father. But if you do not know yourselves, you will be in poverty, and you will be poverty itself. In other words, self-knowledge is the path to realizing and living the kingdom of God. When we open ourselves up to this inner search, we discover that we are not poor in spirit. We are heirs to an immeasurable treasure. And that treasure is the kingdom itself, 
already present and waiting to be found, not in the heavens or on the seas, but in the depths of every human being, in their heart and soul. Jesus teaches us that when we know our true essence, we will be fully recognized. This means that not only will we have a deep understanding of who we are, but also the universe and God himself will recognize the authenticity of our soul. Have you ever stopped to reflect on who you really are? Jesus shows us that self-knowledge leads to a more intimate understanding of our connection with the divine. What does this mean for you? Jesus goes on to say that by knowing ourselves, we will be known and we will realize that we are children of the living Father. This discovery is not merely intellectual. It is a spiritual transformation. In John 8, he declares, You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Knowing the truth about who we really are dissolves the illusions that imprison us and breaks the chains that keep us limited. Think about your own journey of self-knowledge. How many times have you looked outside yourself for answers when, in fact, all the answers were already waiting to be found within you? By getting to know ourselves, we find our true purpose and potential. Have you noticed how, by understanding yourself better, you've also come to understand others and your role in the world more clearly? But Jesus also warns us, if we don't know ourselves, we will be trapped in poverty, and we will be poverty itself. This poverty doesn't just refer to a lack of material goods, but to a spiritual and emotional emptiness. Have you ever experienced that feeling of being lost, empty, without direction? This is the feeling of poverty that results from not recognizing who we really are. The humility of seeking true self-knowledge is the path to wisdom and a life of integrity. Jesus teaches us that this state of inner poverty is the deepest form of misery we can find ourselves in. Remaining ignorant of our true identity leaves us vulnerable, aimless, trapped in limiting beliefs that prevent us from living fully. Are you willing to continue living this way? The root of many of our problems is ignorance about who we really are. By knowing the truth, we are freed from the shadows that obscure our vision and we begin to see the world with clarity and purpose. Jesus invites us to find this truth that sets us free. And what is this truth? It is a deep and personal knowledge of our divine nature and our connection with the Creator. As we venture on this inner quest, we leave behind fear, ignorance, and limitations, and begin to experience a personal transformation that leads us to a state of empowerment, peace, and love. Jesus also reminds us, there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. Sooner or later, the truth will come out. The path to self-knowledge can be arduous and challenging, but the rewards are immeasurable. When we truly know ourselves, we connect with the living Father and the divine that dwells within us. This knowledge not only sets us free, but also enables us to make decisions that are fully in tune with our true selves. Therefore, in calling us to know the truth that sets us free, Jesus invites us to recognize the kingdom of God that is already present within us. This self-knowledge is the key to a truly full and meaningful life. When we commit ourselves to following this inner path, we are freed from the bonds of fear and ignorance, experiencing a profound transformation that leads us to live in tune with our essence, with trust and love. In the fourth verse, Jesus brings another powerful lesson. An old man will not hesitate to ask a seven-day-old child about the place of life, and he will live for many who are first will become last and end up being one. This teaching invites us to humility and challenges us to seek wisdom from the most unexpected sources. Jesus uses the image of an old man asking a newborn baby about the meaning of life. Why would an old man with all his experience and knowledge, seek answers from such a young and inexperienced being. These words make us reflect on the purity and innate wisdom we possess at birth. Have you ever noticed how children seem to have a special connection with the truth and essence of life? The innocence of a newborn represents a form of wisdom that is not contaminated by the experiences and influences of the world. In Matthew 18 verse 3, Jesus says, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. 
Children symbolize purity, simplicity, and a direct connection with the divine that we adults often lose throughout our lives. The old man who doesn't hesitate to ask a child shows great humility and open-mindedness. There is always something new to learn, even in the most unlikely places. In Proverbs 11, we find a timeless truth. When pride comes, so does dishonor, but with the humble is wisdom. This humility is fundamental to our spiritual growth. That's why Jesus tells us that many of the first will become last, and in the end they will all be one. With these words, he reminds us that the true path to growth and enlightenment lies in recognizing universal wisdom, whatever its origin. And most importantly, accepting that in the quest for self-knowledge, we need to learn to listen with a pure heart and see with eyes that are not clouded by pride or prejudice. In this way, we can finally become one with the kingdom of God that dwells within and around us, living in communion with the living Father. This teaching connects directly to one of Jesus' most impactful principles, as described in Matthew 20, verse 16. So the last will be first and the first will be last. These words remind us that in God's kingdom, the hierarchies and social positions we value so much in this world lose their meaning. Have you ever found yourself caught up in the incessant race to be the best, the most successful, or the first at everything? This verse makes us reflect on how illusory such ambitions are. In divine truth, we are all equal and deeply connected. The Apostle Paul reaffirms this message in Galatians 3 verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' words, becoming one implies a unity that transcends any difference. Despite the divisions and comparisons we create, we are all interconnected by a common, divine essence. Now let's move on to the fifth verse. Know what is before your eyes, and what is hidden from you will be revealed to you. For there is nothing hidden that will not be made manifest. With these words, Jesus calls us to pay attention to what is right in front of us. How often do we look for answers in distant places and complex situations, when in fact many of them are already in front of us, waiting to be seen clearly? In Proverbs 4, we are warned, Your eyes look straight ahead, fix your gaze on what is before you. This means that we must carefully examine each path, and ensure that our steps are firm and aligned with good. Jesus promises us that as we realize what is already present in our lives, what is hidden will be revealed. This teaches us that understanding and clarity come from mindfulness and a receptive heart. Have you ever found answers in unexpected situations, simply because you allowed yourself to be truly present and attentive? This verse reminds us that the truth is not necessarily in remote or inaccessible places but often in the everyday and the simple. In Matthew 7, Jesus says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. With sincerity and openness, we can find the answers that once seemed unattainable. The statement that there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed is a powerful confirmation that the truth, sooner or later, always reveals itself. Sometimes we look so far that we don't see what is within our reach. Jesus invites us to turn our gaze to the immediate, to the present, because it is there that many of the answers we seek are hidden. The clarity we gain from recognizing what is in front of us not only reveals hidden truths, but also transforms our perception of the world. As Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, Now we see as in a mirror, dimly, but then we shall see face to face. This revelation connects us to a deeper understanding of reality and to the divine. Jesus urges us to be attentive observers of our own lives, confident that the truth will always be revealed. By being fully present, we can discover answers that were previously invisible. This practice not only brings us clarity, but also deepens our connection with the truth and allows us to live with more purpose and authenticity. In the Gospel of Thomas, we find two hidden gems that complement this message. In verse 107, Jesus says, The kingdom is like a shepherd who had a hundred sheep. One of them, the biggest, got lost. So he left the ninety-nine and went searching until he found it. And when he found it, he said, 
I love you more than the other 99. This parable reminds us of the immense value of each one of us to God. The shepherd, representing Christ himself, does not give up on his lost sheep, demonstrating tireless and absolute love. In Luke 19 verse 10, Jesus says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. This shows us that God never stops looking for us, no matter how far we stray. His love is persevering, and His grace is always present, awaiting our return. And when we are found, there is special joy, as the shepherd declares, I love you more than the 99. This unconditional love is a testimony that while we are all loved, there is a special fondness for those who are lost and then rescued. In Luke 15, Jesus says, I tell you that in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. This teaching shows us the depth of God's love and the immense joy when one of his children returns to him. The parable of the shepherd and the lost sheep illustrates that the kingdom of God is not about anonymous masses, but about each individual who is loved and valued. In John 10, Jesus introduces himself as the good shepherd, saying, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. This intimate and personal relationship reflects God's desire to have a deep and loving relationship with each of us. And in verse 108 of the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus concludes, Whoever drinks from my mouth will become like me, and I will become like him, and what is hidden will be revealed to him. This invitation is a call to spiritual union and inner transformation. He calls us to an intimate and profound relationship in which we become mirrors of his essence and wisdom. Drinking from my mouth means sharing in his truth and communion, and in doing so, our vision is expanded and what was previously obscure becomes clear. It is an invitation to truly become one with him, revealing the divine that already dwells within us. Jesus makes an impressive promise when he states that whoever drinks from his mouth will become like him. This promise is not just about hearing his words, but about integrating them deeply into our being, allowing them to transform our essence from the inside out. It is a radical and profound change that transcends mere intellectual understanding. In John 6, Jesus says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. This passage reveals to us the depth of the communion to which he calls us, a bond in which his presence dwells within us, and our lives become intertwined with his. Furthermore, he assures us that as we are united with him in this intimate way, what is hidden will be revealed. In Matthew 11, Jesus exults, saying, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. These words indicate that divine wisdom is not the privilege of the intellectuals, but rather a gift for the humble and pure of heart. The revelation of the unseen is not merely academic knowledge, but a profound spiritual knowledge accessible only to those who approach Jesus with an open and receptive spirit. The Gospel of Thomas is a true hidden gem, an invitation to introspection and self-transformation. As we delve into its teachings, we are led on a path of self-knowledge and the realization that the kingdom of God is already among us. This gospel offers us a unique and transformative perspective on the words of Jesus, inviting us to see the divine in everyday life, to cultivate humility, and to promote unity amid divisions. These teachings challenge us to live with greater awareness and fulfillment, recognizing the true essence we carry and the divine purpose that guides us. The Gospel of Thomas takes us beyond superficial appearances, urging us to look deeper, to identify our own divine nature, and to live with purpose and fulfillment. In this way, what is hidden in our lives, the deepest truths and the meaning of our existence, will gradually be revealed if we seek sincerely and with an open heart. Remember, what is hidden will manifest when we are able to look with the eyes of faith and love. The secret to revelation is sincere and constant seeking. It is on the spiritual journey, in true surrender to Christ, 
that mysteries are dissipated and truth becomes luminous. Thank you for watching this video. Leave your like and subscribe to the Living Hope channel on YouTube. Activate notifications by clicking on the bell to receive other publications.